Now, most of you will know that I get my color film developed in Taiwan. I also get black and white done. Now, this big batch here was actually done last time I was in Taiwan a few months ago. Um, I've got black and white and color in there. Um, that's medium format and 35 mil. Now, when I get home, I normally scan my film, which I scan it with, wait a minute, oh, this whack and great big thing, which is the Epson V800, which is a good scanner. Good scanner, I say, not a great scanner, it's a good scanner. Um, I don't think it's as good as getting a lab to scan the film, but to be truthful, there's nowhere in New Zealand that does a good scan anymore. So I've been tolerating the V800 and working with that. Now, the problem is with the V800, it takes a long time to scan a roll of film. It's a long process, and to be honest, you get a lot of dust because you've got a big sheet of glass you've got to clean, and the negative as well. So I wanted something that I could scan my negatives while I'm overseas in the hotel, so it's a portable system, and would give me better quality. Now, a few people mentioned to me a new software, which is called Negative Lab Pro, which is a plugin for Lightroom, which we will get to later on, which you do need to do this process. But what I'm going to show you is a very simple way to scan your negatives with a digital camera, mirrorless or digital SLR, whatever you want to use, as long as it's got a macro function or a macro lens. Now, this is the Panasonic G9, and this has the 30 mil Panasonic um, macro lens. So I'm going to use that to scan or digitalize. Yes, it's, it's, digi it's actually a word, digitalize the negatives using the camera. And then we're going to put them into Lightroom and then we're just going to process them. And it's a really easy process. It's so much easier than using the Epson V800. It only takes a few minutes to set up the system. But what I'm going to show you is first uh, how I put my negatives into the negative holder. Now, these I picked up online. Most of the items I'm using in this video will be down below in the description. So you guys can click on the links and check out the items for yourself. Now, these are negative holders. I don't know what they were designed for, but they work really well. So they come apart like that. Okay, we're going to remove, remove the negatives out of the way. Okay, so you've got three parts to it. You've got a top plate, you've got a bottom metal plate, you've got the sandwich part like this, which works really well. Okay, so all you do, and it's really easy, you put the bottom plate, which is metal, underneath it. You line it up with the holes, like that. Okay, and then you get a, a negative. We're going to use medium format for this. So you put the negative inside, like so. And then you use this top bit which has magnets on it as well, and that flattens everything in there. Then you close the top, like that, okay, very easy. Pull that off, drop the bottom bit off, and then you have this perfectly straight, tight negative inside this holder. And the nice thing is, you get the outside edge of the negative. Now, if you're using the V800, the software actually takes away that. It actually crops the image for you. You can crop the image how you want with this, and you get that nice edge. If you want to leave the edge on there, which some photos do look really nice for the actual negative edge around it. And they actually do a 35 mil version too, which is here. So we're going to use the medium format one. And what else you will need is a light box or a light table, but most people call them light boxes, which is this one here. Now this is quite a large one. Um, I ordered the wrong one basically, but we use this for the video. Um, you can get much smaller than this. It's an, it's an LED panel. Now this has a built-in battery as well. The built-in battery is fine to travel with as long as it's built into the device. There's no problem with that toy. You can chuck it in your luggage and away you go. So if you turn it on, see, it's a light panel. It gets quite a bit of light actually. And it's variable as well. You can brighten it or darken it just by holding the power button. So it will dim down and if you tap it again, it will brighten up again. Very simple system. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to do the setup. So first of all, you must make sure that your surface is level that you're working from, that the actual light box is sitting on, that is dead level. And then also your camera must be level. But what I'm going to show you is what I use is a really right stuff out plate, which is here. And I've extended the arm fully out. So what I can do is once it's locked into the tripod, it extends over the light box. And then the column on my tripod, and really right stuff tripod again, is extended out. So I can get as close to the table as possible. Now, to get the camera level, yes, you can use the electronic level inside the camera. I prefer to use this to get my camera level, which is a three-way spirit level, basically. You slide into the hot shoe, and then you can make sure everything is level, like that. So everything must be level, because if you're not level, the base is not level, and the camera's not level, part of the negative will be out of focus, and then you're going to have problems. I've already loaded some negatives into the negative holder, and it's very, very easy to do this. So you basically line up the camera. 
I find it works really well if I use the grid lines on there and I just manually focus in and also around about 5.6 and the lowest ISO obviously the camera goes to and use a two second timer. So once I've lined up my photo, I leave a little bit of edge around it so you can crop it in later on. And I just focus it, set the timer, and it's as easy as that. And then I move over to the next slide, which is there. Again, the focus is already done. I'm already pre-focused. Set the timer. And the great thing with the G9 is it has the high res mode. So if I let it do its job and it will build that photo and you'll actually have a high res photo. Now we're going to head over to the computer now and I'm going to show you how to quickly edit these digital files in Negative Lab Pro. This is just a quick look at the software um, Negative Lab Pro which is a plugin for Lightroom. Now I've got a few images here that I've scanned that we're going to go through so I'll enlarge the screen Right, okay, now what you'll need to do first off is you pick an image and you crop it. Now you need to take a white balance from the actual image. So you just click that and it will correct it. And then you push Control N and it will bring up the software. Now, Negative Lab Pro is a free download of a 14 day trial, so you can actually test it for yourself, which is great. So all you do is you click Convert Negative, you make sure you pick um, digital SLR scan or mirror scan is the same thing you can actually pick different types there so we're going to pick this one and then we're going to pick the scanner that I want to replicate and then convert negative now I'm not going to do any adjustments in this what I'm going to do is just give you the quick look at the image because I think people adjust photos how they like and I don't want to show you how I adjust my photos because it may not exactly be what you're looking for but as you can see straight out the box it's done an amazing job with that negative and if you see I've left the actual black edge around there as well which is quite nice now we'll go to another one now this negative was shot on Cine Steel 800T so we're going to do the same control N it brings it up everything's all ready to go and it convert negative and again I'm not going to do any editing to the negative I'm just going to show you how good it converts straight out of the box and there you go you can see it's done a really really good job with the actual negative and as you can see I've got those really cool orbs that you get on the red lights from Cine Steel 800T. And it does a good job of black and white. Now this image here I actually shot in Taiwan as part of my exhibition. I had my medium format camera with me so I thought what I'd do I'd grab some black and white photos while I was there as well. So what you can do is you can obviously straighten the image like that and you can actually crop it as well. So you can take as much away as you want, or you can keep as much. And it's very, very simple in Lightroom. You just crop the image how you want, like that. Okay, and then again, Control N, and then you can pick black and white, and convert negative. And again, I'm not gonna do any editing. I'm just gonna show you the very simple conversion of this, which looks like that. We'll do one more. Now this one again I've cropped and again you use auto white balance, okay? Then control N and again convert negative. And it's very, very simple and it's very, very quick. This was just a quick demo in Lightroom on how the actual Negative Lab Pro software works. I, like I said, I've not shown you any editing because I don't really want to go into that. That's something I think people do personally and everybody has their own way of editing. But this is just to show you straight out the box, it does a great job. And there's a direct link to Negative Lab Pro website where you can download a 14 day free trial so you can try it for yourself. So I downloaded the 14 day free trial, tested it, and straight away got the software. It is that good, it is a great software to use. And there's a lot of information on the website as well so it can help you edit and get the best from your negatives. If you guys want to know how I edit my negatives in Lightroom with Negative Lab Pro, Leave me a comment down below, give me a thumbs up, and I'll do a video in a few weeks on that process. But I do think it's quite boring. I don't think anybody actually wants to see that. But if you do want to see it, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.